started, so here it is. Voilà. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Buenas tardes. Good uh, good afternoon. And uh, our friend Eva is going to take us through a gastronomy tour uh, of Greece. And uh, as usual, I mean, you always speak very interesting uh, subjects. So well, we can have a good time with you. Huh? I hope so. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So the screen is yours, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's evening actually in Greece, I'm in Athens. Um, welcome to our um, joint webinar with um, uh, Dominique, as always. I'm really happy to see um, a lot of you joining today and we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, so my name is Eva and um, I'm uh, the um, sales rep for uh, Eclectic Greece. I look after client relationships and business development for Eclectic Greece, which is the inbound luxury division of Kubernetes Travel. So before we start our um, uh, exploration of Greece um, and the gastronomy destinations that I've got today, uh, I'd like to take a couple of uh, minutes to talk to you about who we are and uh, what we offer and our value proposition. So Eclectic uh, was set up in uh, 2012 and uh, it belongs to the biggest uh, travel networks in the industry. So we are part of the biggest travel organization in Greece at the moment, yet family owned. So that gives us a lot of uh, flexibility and a lot of uh, speed in terms of decision making. I report to the two owners directly. Uh, so uh, being a part of um, a, a big travel company, we not only have the capacity to handle uh, the individual travelers like the FIT travelers, but also um, large uh, family requests, incentives and celebrations and parties of all types. Um, and with a history of now uh, more than 45 years, we're actually 46 years this year, we're able to negotiate the best terms for um, our mutual clients and resolve any unforeseen incidents that might come across to it. So uh, we have solid relationships in the industry. Uh, our partners trust us. We have a team of experts with a lot of international exposure and experience, as well as a very healthy financial um, status that really sets us apart from the competition, especially after this year. So Eclectic Greece, people ask us a lot about this financial stability, has managed to fully refund all its clients uh, within seven months, so more than half a million um, euros was given back to our um, clients simply because we knew that we're going to be around for this next day, whenever this next day will be. Um, so we're able to, um, to um, process back all this um, refunding. So moving on to the next slide, I'd like to share uh, with you uh, some of, our, of the key benefits when you book with us. So first of all, we immediately acknowledge your request. Mind you, we are in a different time zone. So unless we're asleep, we will be jumping on that email to acknowledge your request. Then we will pr propose to you within 24 hours. So the first draft proposal will come out as long as we have the key details and an indication of budget. Um, we always suggest a call in order to have all the details and the special requirements uh, from your side in place before we start uh, building on the proposal and everything is tailor-made um, and um, our office of course operates um, uh, in the peak season from eight o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night uh, and it covers majority of your working day so you can always reach us on the U.S. number that you see on the screen as well free of charge so what we do is that we provide you with a full cost breakdown so we demonstrate transparency um, you're entitled to 12% commission across all of our services when we're working on gross rates. Of course, we have the opportunity to offer net rates and then you do your markup. Um, unless um, we're talking about the private yacht charters, which is um, commission of 8%. Uh, finally, your commission gets paid through um, Onyx, which is a streamlined commission process. Uh, with no charges um, to you uh, about a month or a month and a half after the last checkout of your um, client. So now we're moving to um, our um, um, the slide of our team. You see the CEO and owner Christos Kubernetes and the team of uh, managers in operations, marketing and product. And of course, our senior travel designers and my colleagues who um, run the concierge services. So we haven't lost anyone uh, on this pandemic. Everybody uh, is uh, on board, um, ready to help you for uh, 2021. So 
Greece is um, undoubtedly a very popular destination for uh, in Europe and also for um, overseas travelers uh, with a brand name that is constantly growing. So today we're going to be touching on the top gastronomy destinations, starting from the northern part of Greece with Thessaloniki, the co-capital of Greece, uh, which is less visited and undiscovered by international clients. So we will then move down to uh, Athens, the capital of Greece, um, and then Crete, the largest Greek island, and finishing off with Naxos, one of the most exciting gastronomical places in the, in the Cyclades. So at the very end of the presentation, we will also touch on our uh, private charters and uh, villa offering. So these destinations that I mentioned uh, earlier were chosen as they combine a great variety of things to the traveler. They will be able to provide the true uh, Greek phylloxenia, uh, the unique scenery, uh, traditional food, and a lot of alternative activities. Of course, you can combine those with the popular cosmopolitan island of uh, Mykonos and the breathtaking um, Santorini. Um, so first of all, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I, sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be um, starting uh, with um, uh, the northern part of Greece, as I explained, uh, Thessaloniki, which is here. So Thessaloniki um, uh, is um, the second largest city in the, in the country and a destination that it's uh, brimming uh, with history and culture. It offers a very easy access to historic uh, monuments like uh, Pella and Virginia, where Alexander the Great was born. And of course, the mountain Olympus, the biggest mountain in Greece, which was the residence of 12 gods of Greece, according to um, the Greek uh, mythology. So Thessaloniki uh, is um, a very cosmopolitan um, city. A modern metropolis, I would say, built in the Thermaic Gulf. So it's built by the water, which makes it um, even more uh, amazing. Um, and it's widely known for the historic significance, which I will uh, elaborate on uh, a little in a, in, a, in a bit, and uh, the vibrant and artistic um, city center. Um, Thessaloniki was also um, named or referred to as uh, Madre de Israel. Uh, due to its large Jewish population who uh, migrated there from Spain uh, back in the 1400s. So um, as a start in order to um, uh, explore, to get to know uh, Thessaloniki, uh, I would say it would be a city tour, uh, which will take you through the rich history, culture, uh, the beauty of the fascinating museums. Um, so we would recommend that as an introduction to um, the city. So Thessaloniki offers a very, um, sophisticated uh, culinary scene, uh, a very vibrant uh, nightlife, which I can uh, vouch for as I spent four years um, studying in Thessaloniki and another two years working, uh, and an amazing promenade along the sea that uh, makes this um, um, uh, city um, easy to fall in love with. Uh, it's definitely a, a popular destination for um, um, the Europeans, uh, as there is a fantastic connection to Europe. Actually, the airport has been renovated just last year with the expansion of the air corridor, and the plan is an ambitious plan uh, to have overseas um, um, uh, flights landing into Thessaloniki in the next couple of years. So please uh, watch this space. Um, so following the, the seafront promenade, as you see on the, on the screen, uh, conveniently passing just um, below um, the Aristotelus um, Square. Uh, the Aristotelus Square took the name from Aristoteles, who was born a couple of hours outside Thessaloniki. So Aristoteles is the greatest uh, Greek philosopher. Uh, you will um, get to Levkos Pyrgos, the, the white tower that I was showing to you earlier on the screen which is the Thessaloniki's um, hallmark. So it's part of the city's fortification in the Byzantine and Ottoman, so the Turkish um, empire. And it's now a museum. Uh, it used to be a jail back in the days uh, where you can enjoy the beautiful uh, view. So you can actually walk up the stairs and get a 360 um, a view of uh, Thessaloniki. Uh, then moving down to La Dadica is one of the most famous uh, neighborhoods in the city and a hotspot for dining, uh, coffee and nightlife options. Um, further, a couple of blocks away, you will come across the uh, Modiano market, 
the city's original uh, produce market, um, which is which offers an amazing variety of meat, fish, and all the local uh, produce of um, Thessaloniki. So I would say that a, a typical um, so you will um, get to explore little shops like this in the, Mondi in the Mondiano uh, market. Um, and I would say the typical um, uh, Greek breakfast, not only for the people in the northern part of Greece, but you know the, the, the rest of us, uh, would be the traditional kuluri. So you'll see on the right hand side, uh, these little pastries, which are soft inside and crunchy outside. Uh, with sesame on top. So that's um, a very typical Greek breakfast. So we're, Greeks are not big on, on breakfast. We eat like, you know, very lightly. We mostly focus on lunch and dinner. So it's a very healthy option to start your day and you can find it uh, in any bakery, uh, in any part of Greece, uh, as well as there's a lot of stalls like in you know, the stands in Thessaloniki on the street uh, that sell um, kuluri. Uh, now, for um, those who don't know, um, Greece is um, extremely um, uh, popular, although it's not probably marketed uh, abroad and it's not greatly known for the white production, but it's got an amazing variety of uh, wine. So there's three top regions that produce some of the greatest wine varieties. One of those is in the, the northern part of Greece, it's actually the biggest. So the wine lovers will be able to um, enjoy uh, enjoy a private visit in the domain of Giro Vasiliu. Giro Vasiliu is one is actually the biggest wine producer in, in Greece, uh, and you will have the opportunity to walk through its vineyards on the slopes of Epanomi. Epanomi is a very small town, just about half an hour outside of Thessaloniki, followed by the introduction to winemaking. So the domain also hosts a fantastic museum, a unique museum, where you will be able to admire um, a collection of corkscrews, um, some of those dating back in the 18th century. So the, the tour will, uh, will end with some of the um, most exceptional award uh, wines uh, that you can taste in, in Greece. Uh, now, if you wish to, to add a little bit of um, a splash, a historic splash in your exploration of the Saloniki, I would totally recommend the private guided tour of Pella. Uh, Pella um, is the capital of the Macedonian uh, kingdom and the birthplace of Alexander the Great. And then you will take a stop at the archaeological uh, museum of Vergina uh, to admire the gold, bronze uh, and mosaic uh, artifacts. You will be able to, um, to also um, see um, where King Philip II, King Philip was Alexander the Great's fa great father, uh, where he was uh, buried, and also the remains of the Macedonian uh, palace, the Macedonian uh, Empire. Um, so uh, Thessaloniki, despite located on the northern part of Greece, um, you see sometimes uh, we refer to people in the northern part of every country as being a lot colder than the southern part. Um, this is what we have in our heads um, anyway. So the southern part, it's uh, warmer and it's uh, more friendlier, but it's actually the other way around for Thessaloniki. So it's known for the great hospitality, the warmth and the generosity of the people. And I lived there for, for a very long time. So, I, I'm, you know, I'm I'm totally like, you know, um, in favor of, of, of this statement. Uh, and actually the, the reason that I mentioned that is because, because of the multicultural background, the main factor is that. So people who live in Thessaloniki came from all different parts of the world where Greek uh, populations were living like Pontus, which is the Southern part of the Black Sea, uh, Istanbul and the East coast of, uh, of uh, Turkey uh, as well as uh, Spain, where the Jewish community was um, located. Now we're moving to the beautiful capital of Greece, Athens. Um, Athens has been, has been the capital since the um, 1834, and it has totally transformed after the 2004 uh, Olympics. Uh, it's perceived as a stop before guests head to um, the islands. However, the capital has a lot to offer and it's worth exploring for a minimum of two or three days. So the city is full of history, as you know. It's got an amazing food scene, which is lately competing well with the fine dining of Mykonos and Santorini. 
there is numerous in the city center numerous shopping districts that offer marvelous strolls uh, in its unique neighborhoods of Plaka and Monastiraki. I'm sure you recognize the two names uh, just underneath the, the Acropolis. So the most uh, popular Greek islands are connected by air within a maximum of 50 minutes uh, flight, as well as Athens has three different ports that can take you to uh, the main um, uh, Greek islands. So our clients will have a variety of private guided activities to um, choose when uh, they're in Athens. Um, the most popular would be the Athens City Tour, which combines uh, the Acropolis Rock with the new um, Acropolis Museum. And uh, our suggestion would be to take those tours quite um, early in the day uh, or very late in the evening. I mean, in the summertime, the day lasts until you know, 9.30 in the, in the evening, so you can avoid the crowds. Um, but my, my top favorite activity, which is uh, around food, would be, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back one, uh, would be the um, Athens um, uh, culinary tour, which is an ode to the Greek cuisine. Uh, and we absolutely love recommending that to our clients, especially if they are in Athens for a very short um, time. Um, you will take nine different stops. Make sure you haven't eaten before because you will be full by the end of that. You will taste the best Greek olive oil, the best souvlaki, uh, traditional filo pastry um, uh, delicacies, uh, and a variety of other um, Greek culinary um, treasures. So you can taste uh, things like what we have for breakfast, what we have uh, for, uh, for lunch, and you will find out a lot more about the Mediterranean diet and why it's so good for, uh, for you. Uh, another activity that it's really um, amazing to explore when you um, have time um, in Athens, um, it would be, sorry, my PowerPoint is playing up. Uh, it would be the triple treat as we call it, which is um, olive oil, wine, and, and a cooking class. So the extra virgin olive oil is the Greek liquid gold. So Greeks were the, were the first to cultivate olive trees in the European Mediterranean area. And since then, the olive tree was an integral part of the Greek cuisine. So the olive oil is the, the core element of the internationally um, acclaimed Mediterranean um, diet. And it's connected to our culture, our history, our tradition, and even to mythology. So in the, in the first part, you will have an interactive um, seminar how to, um, and you will learn how to choose and to appreciate the extra virgin uh, olive oil. Uh, you'll break all the common myths that you have heard about, but above all, you will learn how to integrate that in your um, daily life. Uh, afterwards, you will have a wine tasting experience under the uh, expert guidance of our um, sommeliers. Uh, featuring some of the most popular um, Greek award-winning wines, including the popular uh, Santorini wines. And the, in the last part, you will have a, a hands-on cooking class concentrating on uh, making a traditional uh, Greek meal. So what Greeks would actually uh, cook for lunch or dinner at their households. Um, a fantastic activity to, to, um, to take in, uh, in Athens or a little bit outside Athens uh, would be the beautiful area of Sunio, just about an hour, an hour and, and 20 minutes away from Athens. You will see um, the Poseidon tape temple in Sunio, um, which is the most magical sunset that you can enjoy by the Athenian Riviera. So it was built back in 440 before Christ. Uh, and it's one of the most major monuments uh, of the golden age of Athens. So the ancient Greeks, especially the sea people, the sailors, believed storms uh, were a sign of Poseidon's anger. And therefore the temple uh, at Cape Sunio was a sacred place where sa sailors and the general public um, population came to offer animal sacrifices and other gifts to uh, appease Poseidon and, and, and uh, find favor. Um, the um, bespoke experience that uh, I'm presenting to you now, it's one of our um, top favorites and we've done it for a variety of our clients. So basically a, a memorable experience to dine under the sacred rock of the Acropolis. 
uh, and the, by the New Acropolis Museum. So when the museum shuts, we privatize it and you will have the opportunity to have a private guided tour uh, of the museum, enjoying this delicious meal next to the monuments that are dating back about 25 centuries. And now we're moving to the largest island of Greece, which is Crete. Um, Crete is um, a, a destination um, uh, full of um, history and, and culture. Uh, it's a destination that can cover every taste. I mean, it's a large island, so you've got a lot to explore there. Uh, but from a young couple's um, adventure or a honeymoon to a multi-generation family trip, it can really please the most demanding clients. So Crete is, is known for um, its delicious cuisine. Um, so that's a, a picture that really um, in my head can um, sum up what Crete is, is for me. It's this spectacular crystal blue water with uh, the wild um, uh, scenery. There's a lot of uh, uh, rocks and mountains, but also it's known for the delicious cuisine. Um, it's a self-sufficient island due to its warm climate and it supports the production of great local products. So you will see um, here all the amazing offering that you can have in, um, in Crete. Uh, this is actually a typical um, uh, Greek table. Uh, with all the vegetables and the olive oils and uh, some uh, um, savory pastry and some uh, uh, other delicacies that they produce in, in Crete. Uh, so the Cretan um, um, landscape uh, as well boasts a diverse range of natural beauty uh, and Crete is also popular uh, for um, the uh, unique customs and the local celebrations. So you will see here that um, they uh, they do a lot of, uh, they have a fantastic enchanting um, music, their own traditional instruments and traditional dancing, uh, which they perform with these um, uh, outfits. Um, so uh, Crete is connected uh, from uh, Athens within uh, 50 minutes to both Heraklion and Hanya, so very easy to, to get to. And it makes a fantastic itinerary from Athens to Crete and Santorini, because there is a ferry of um, just um, a couple of hours to get to um, Santorini. So it makes a fantastic itinerary uh, for your um, clients. Now, when we are exploring the east side of, of Crete, and we're in Heraklion, um, I would recommend you not to miss the Knossos Palace and the Archaeological Museum is a fantastic tour. Uh, it's connected to the Minoan civilization Many of you might have heard, but it's um, the Minoans made a significant contribution to the development of the Western European civilization uh, and the, and the uh, wider um, civilization um, as it is known today. Um, so definitely worth taking um, a trip to Knossos uh, uh, Palace. And then the next um, uh, activity that is again around gastronomy uh, it's an extravagant experience that I was absolutely uh, amazed when we added that in our product line um, last year. Uh, and it's really my favorite uh, because my mom really makes her own uh, traditional feta cheese every year. So if you don't go to Crete, you can come to my um, hometown to show you how to make cheese. So um, here in Heraklio, your clients and yourselves, of course, if you visit, you will uh, have the opportunity to visit a paddock uh, where um, you will have the, the chance to milk the goats with a shepherd and participate in the traditional uh, cheese making uh, process. And right after, we will introduce you uh, to the Cretan traditional music, as I've shown you um, earlier, and the local musical uh, instruments, while you enjoy a glass of wine before um, the sunset. So your day will uh, come to an, end, to an end with a superb Cretan uh, meal. Uh, and a selection of uh, award-winning local uh, wine. So you will have it all. You will learn all about um, the, the Cretan uh, traditions. Um, further down on the east, as we move, you will come across the uh, spectacular uh, cosmopolitan uh, luxury summer destination and holiday resort of Elunda. Um, so uh, Elunda used to be the... Um, the most cosmopolitan holiday destination for 
um, uh, jet setters and prime ministers back in the 80s and then the 90s, and still it's very popular these days. So uh, in Elunda, you will have the opportunity to, to uh, visit Spinalonga. And while it is associated with the time of quarantine, which is very familiar to all of us these days, uh, back in the 50s was used for lepers to get treated and recover. Spinalonga today is an open air museum and a must do activity while you're in, um, in Elunda. Uh, it's an uninhabited island. It's got a, a lot of, um, uh, it's a very popular tourist uh, attraction. Uh, it's got the little beach uh, around it with very shallow water. Uh, and it's also considered to become a world um, heritage site. Now we're moving on the Western side of Crete, Hania, uh, a very popular and year round destination. So Hania would be one of those destinations that will the hotels will remain open um, throughout the year. So the region of uh, Hania makes up the uh, westernmost part of Crete and it's famous for its wild um, countryside, the lovely waterside, possibly the best beaches in the island and its Venetian port. Um, Hania has been conquered by many different uh, nations such as the Arabs, the, Venetian, the Venetians and the Ottomans. And you will see the marks of these influences in the architecture as you walk around um, the town. And uh, while you're in the area, you can explore the small traditional villages, but uh, also the mountains, uh, as, as well as the stunning beaches of Elafonisi and Balos. The first picture that I've shown you uh, was um, uh, Elafonisi, where you can also take a day sailing tour to explore all the other uh, nearby beaches. Um, so, in uh, Hania, there is a variety of activities for um, predominantly the fit travelers. Uh, very intriguing activities, the Samaria Gorge, which is about 16 kilometers uh, long. That's about 11 miles. Um, so, I would definitely uh, recommend that if you're really uh, fit and you want to explore um, uh, a little bit like, you know, the, the nature. Uh, it's a really breathtaking activity and you can see another picture um, here of, uh, of the gorge. One of my favorites, of course, if you don't want to take that um, uh, long hiking, I, I would recommend another one which is half of the distance of the Samaria Gorge, but this is one of the most uh, popular ones. Uh, and then we're moving um, again in Hania in one of our um, uh, gastronomical experiences, uh, the olive oil and the wine, the gifts of the Cretan land, as we call it. Uh, so Crete is the biggest producer of olive oil in Crete, and dare I say, one of the most famous regions for olive oil in Europe. Um, so on this activity, uh, the first stop would be an ecological prototype farm um, cultivated by fifth generation owners that promote a traditional way of organic olive oil production. So the olive oil is stone milled and cold pressed. Uh, following that, you will have an, an olive oil tasting and you will have the, um, you will visit a, a quaint uh, winery, the realization of a lo long life um, uh, dream of a Greek American owner who was born and raised in that small village. And your day, of course, will finish with a traditional credit meal uh, in a family run to Verna before you head back to your um, beautiful hotel. Uh, the next um, activity would be um, in the beautiful um, um, city of uh, Rethim, not town, I would say, um, rather. Uh, so before we move to Naxos, I'm really keen to touch on Rethim, no, because it's a really a, a jewel in, in Crete, uh, and it's very... Um, 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 it's, it's not as exposed as Iraklion and, and Hania. So Rethimno uh, began a period of growth when the Venetian conquerors of the island decided to put an intermediate stop between Hania and Iraklion. So today's old town, as you see on the, on the picture, was almost entirely, entirely built by the Republic of Venice, and it's one of the best preserved old towns in Crete. Uh, and one of the main reasons people come to Greece uh, is the food and the majority of our destinations would try to incorporate a culinary walk, a food tour or a cooking class to cover all tastes. So we couldn't miss 
uh, Rethymno uh, out of this. So in this uh, beautiful little town, you will have um, a, a walking tour with an experienced private guide. So you will need to do one thing uh, because again, you have nine different stops to take. So you not, not to eat before that. So you will learn about the, the Cretan cuisine uh, you will taste um, rustic cheeses and artisanal breads, followed by a live demonstration uh, of the uh, ultra thin pastry. You can see it here by the last traditional fellow master of Crete. So this gentleman here, he is 86 years old and he's still going. So then you will line up uh, with the other locals for the traditional kaltuni savory pie with cheese. Uh, you will try raki, which is as strong as vodka, and it's the traditional uh, drink of Crete. And you will end up, um, uh, you will end uh, this uh, beautiful tour with uh, the popular Greek souvlaki, uh, which is kind of like, you know, um, universal, not just um, Greek these days. And our last stop before uh, we finish uh, our tour would be Naxos. Naxos is very close to my heart, is uh, a, a fantastic um, a destination for, uh, for holidays. It belongs to the complex of Cyclades or Kiklades. It's a, a complex of about 12 uh, islands and it's becoming extremely popular um, for international clients the past couple of years. Uh, it is the largest and greenest island in the Cyclades and can be reached by air from Athens within 35 minutes or by ferry within four minutes. Now, Naxos, uh, this is the trademark of Naxos that it's called uh, Portara, Portara or the great door. So Porta is the door, Portara is the big door and essentially uh, is a massive marble um, doorway of the temple of Apollo, uh, the god Apollo that stands proudly as the jewel of Naxos as I mentioned. Uh, it lies close to the port, is very close to the port on the island of Palatia, which was once a hill back in the days was just a strip that it was connecting uh, Palatia with um, the rest of Naxos, but today it's been replaced by a causeway. So according to the myth, because there is always a myth um, uh, in, uh, in, in Greece, according to the myth, the uh, little island of uh, Palatia was exactly where Ariadne, the Minoan princess, so Minoan civilization back in Crete. So the Minoan princess was abandoned by her lover, Theseus, after he killed the Minotaur in the island of, uh, of Crete. So now Naxos is a fantastic um, option for uh, families, um, for, uh, for everyone really, but also for families with um, either younger children or um, uh, teenagers because of the long sandy beaches and the variety and diversity of activities that it offers, such as sailing, um, hiking, cooking classes, kite surfing, uh, mosaic workshops, and a lot of fishing activities. So it's the best value for money uh, destination in the Cyclades to me. And in terms of uh, accommodation and dining due to the local products that get to um, the table fresh and reasonably priced. Um, one of the highlights of Naxos, I would say, is the variety of cheese. So the locals really heavily um, rely on agriculture and the island is known for the best potato in Greece. I know you cannot probably carry a sack of potatoes with you, but you can get some uh, amazing variety of, of cheese in your uh, luggage back home. Um, so there's a lot of uh, trusted partners uh, that we work in terms of hotels, as in all other destinations. Um, specifically in, in Naxos, you will have this uh, authentic proposition of five-star accommodation, uh, however, with a very much unpretentious um, service. Um, now, there is a couple of uh, um, activities that we would recommend, such as the uh, Antiquity and Beyond tour. You will enjoy a panoramic tour of the island, taking all the main um, sites, including the traditional ceramic workshops of uh, Damalas. Uh, the Cycladic mansions of Halki. Halki is one of the most popular villages in Naxos and the marble streets of Apirathos. I would also combine it because it starts from the city center, from the town center of Naxos. I would combine it with an amazing cheese tour uh, and also a hike up to the castle. 
uh, where you can enjoy 360 uh, degree views of the main town uh, and uh, further up the mountains of uh, Naxos. Um, one of my top favorite though would be the Apirantha store, uh, which is up to the mountains. So you can explore the mountains of, um, of Naxos. Uh, it's a very little picturesque village. Um, I would say it's the most traditional amongst all the villages such as Halkyo, Filoti uh, and others with a very special uh, architecture. So you can find out uh, more um, about the food. So foodies can enjoy the opportunity to uh, taste all the uh, regional delicacies, including honey glazed sweets, um, local cheese and ham. As I mentioned, they're, they're very big on those and the citron uh, liqueur, which is a traditional uh, drink of uh, Naxos. Um, then you can combine it, after you take this Apirantha store, you probably get hungry. So you can combine it with Katerina's cooking class, uh, one of my favorite um, suppliers in, uh, in Naxos. We've done a lot of uh, client uh, trips, farm trips, uh, and a lot of other activities with, uh, with her. We actually hosted a cooking class recently with her. Uh, and it's an activity which is hosted by her family. So you will learn to prepare a typical Greek meal with the menu which is designed uh, around vegetables according to the season. Um, so the hostess, which is Katerina, along with her mom and her grandmother, will add their personal touch into the, the meal and they will be showcasing to your clients uh, the secrets of, of, of all the traditional Naxian um, recipes. Now, Naxos is only um, 30 minutes uh, away from Paros uh, by ferry. So if you don't have enough time to explore both islands, I would recommend to take the ferry to Paros and then take a full day Paros and Antiparos um, tour, which is uh, a fantastic um, itinerary. Antiparos is becoming extremely popular um, these days uh, with travelers. There is a lot of villa product, but actually there is two new hotels that are coming into play in 2021. Uh, and of course, uh, it's a destination for food lovers. I mean, the food scene is spectacular. It's only a small island. You see spectacular green water um, and also a destination where the yacht uh, enthusiasts uh, are um, uh, really keen on. So. Um, it's one of my top recommendations um, to uh, explore Paris and Antiparos for, uh, for a day. Now, before we close, I promised you that uh, we will be talking about our villa product and our private charters. So Greece has 1,200 islands and, a num and the number of inhabited islands is about 200. Um, you need a little bit more than a couple of weeks to explore, but, um, but our suggestion is that if you like the idea, you can take a private charter uh, in Greece. There is no better way to explore it than, uh, than this, especially this time around. Um, I'm, I have purposely uh, put together a, uh, an itinerary, so a couple of uh, options uh, for private charters, but I have put together this um, itinerary. Um, which is showcasing that uh, within um, uh, seven days or eight days, you can explore seven, sorry, nine different uh, destinations, uh, which is on the uh, western part of, of, Greek, of Greece, starting from Athens, going through the Corinthian Canal, and then exploring the Ionian Islands. The Ionian Islands are this area between mainland Greece and Italy. Um, to me, um, it's, one of my favorite destinations uh, as it combines a lot more um, greenery and is a lot calmer and less choppy in the summer months compared to the Cyclades, so the GNC, where Naxos, Paros, Mykonos and Santorini are um, located. So I'll share with you a couple of pictures. So you'll see here uh, the places where um, you'll be visiting. Ithaca uh, is, the, in, according to the Greek mythology, is the island home of uh, hero Odysseus, uh, whose delayed return to the island is the plot of the classical uh, Greek tale Odyssey. Uh, Lefkada is the only island connected, connected to uh, Greece mainland uh, by a causeway. Uh, and the closest airport is about an hour with a lot of European flights. And uh, of course, Kefalonia, Kefalonia is the largest among the Ionian Islands, also has an airport. Uh, and then uh, at the end, Atokos, Kastos and uh, Nafaktos are smaller destinations, but Zakynthos is one of the most popular ones. 
um, especially for European travelers. It's got an international airport served by um, charter flights from uh, main, sorry, from um, Central and Northern Europe. And the nickname of the island is the Flower of Levante, uh, bestowed upon um, by the Venetians who were in possession of Zakynthos between 1400 and 1700. So before we close, we'll touch quickly on our Villa product. So uh, our team um, has done a really great job developing the past couple of years, uh, the, uh, the Villa offering. Uh, we're actually launching in the next month our Villa website. So up until now, we would put forward in a proposal to you a couple of options. Now you can explore all of our portfolio um, through uh, a website, and then we can start talking about the um, details and the services. Um, I would say that Crete that comes up first on our screen, it would be an option that has a longer season that lasts up to the 10th or 15th of November because of the very warm climate um, according to um, where it sits on the, on the map. So you have options in Elunda and of course, um, Iraklio. Uh, Paros, we quickly touched on that. Paros and Naxos are two destinations that offer a variety of villa products. And Naxos is coming up here, which is a lot more affordable compared to Mykonos and Santorini. And they wouldn't um, necessarily need a minimum length of stay like Mykonos would. Uh, so Naxos offering, and then we go to the more uh, upmarket um, villa options in Mykonos. You will see the luxury um, in the architecture and the design. And then Santorini with breathtaking views over the volcano, Villa Napsica, one of our top suggestions, comes with a butler and a chef for the duration of the stay. And Corfu, we haven't had the opportunity to touch on Corfu, but if you need more, I can definitely give you guidance. Um, it's one of my top destinations. I spend a lot of Easter times and, and summer times in Corfu because I have relatives there. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a, a destination that is coming up with international clients and a lot more hotels that are opening up. And finally, Porto Heli, it's Villa 20 in the most spectacular um, hotel product that we have to offer in Greece, the popular Amanzoe. So Villa 20 can accommodate um, 20 people. And actually the staffing is more than the actual guest, it's 25, um, 25 um, members of staff that will be looking after your, your clients. And that's it from me, Dominique, do you want me to um, stop sharing? <laughs> Thank you very much, Eva. It was very, very complete. I don't know if I had time. I just wanted to present quickly the OMA, but we were yes. a little bit over time. Meanwhile, I saw that Peg, you had a question, something where you wanted to know the four minutes to Naxos, was it by ferry? Do you remember? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. It was, did the same minutes? No. <laughs> it's four hours. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, my <laughs> oh, Okay. It's Perfect. 35 minutes flight from Athens and from uh, the Athenian ports. It would take four hours. Uh -huh. Sorry, uh -huh. Peg. I don't know. Alors, now we're going to just share quickly the presentation of Oma in Santorini. Oma Santorini was supposed to open this year, but I know you visited it. So you had they had a, like a three months soft opening before and they're gonna open in April, 2021. We are located on the island of Santorini uh, between Ia and Fira, and uh, which is definitely uh, a great location. Uh, I think uh, Eva, you always said we have the most magnificent uh, sunset. Uh, first also hotel, probably great for family because you don't have so much staircase and it's an easy access and it's very secluded. We have only 25 rooms and suites, which are all facing the caldera, and five villas in the back. So I know our friend Eva told me, and she said, I can repeat it, that today, <laughs> and that today we have the best OMA as the best accommodation in all categories uh, in Santorini. So I'm always proud to say it, Eva. And as it's, you said, it's one of the most spectacular products um, in the island. Very clean lines, very modern. Uh, it's not it's not cluttered. It's uh, it's very stylish. I mean, it's it's brand new, but at the same time, it offers spectacular views. Uh, for me, 
it's the the best uh, location in the island especially during these times that everybody needs a lot more privacy i would say oma would be your top um uh, hotel um in in santorini away from the um the, the busy uh, era where everybody wants to go and watch the sunset so you can watch the sunset from your balcony you don't have to go anywhere else okay well thank you 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 see you're the best for presentation huh? you have all the insight and uh i think uh tori you said i know you work with axis do you also work with umap My dear Eva, did you see the sorry, question? Sorry, Dominique, I'm just trying to reply, uh, to, ah. reply to the question <laughs> Peg, because we didn't reply to her previous question. Sorry, what was that? Uh, Tori was asking, uh, I know you work with Axus, do you also work with uh, UMAP? Uh, no, at the moment we only have um, the uh, Axus application. Mm -hmm. And Dana, I know you're speaking on writing in Greek, so then I will uh, be able says, to understand what you said. <laughs> she says, oh, Diana, she says, thank you and Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. Huh? So I know I was not too off. So, um, all right, I think uh, we, I don't see any more questions. Uh, uh, there is one um, that will be from Glory. Mm -hmm. Who should we reach out to now to plan a trip? I have a group of 14. Uh, myself, Lori. <laughs> yes, huh? you're going to do the follow up. We're going to send and you the Of course. Um, I'm sending you the email address, but also um, keep uh, Dominique in copy. Mm -hmm. Well, but I mean, everyone, there will be a follow up uh, for everything. And, uh, sure. Voilà. All right. So um, we are forgetting any, anyone. So if we want a little bit over time, but I was very interesting, Eva. And uh, I think for some of us who didn't have lunch yet, I think we're all ready. We're just missing, of course, the uh, olive oil and all the beautiful things you show us. Huh? Uh, so <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> any other, uh, no, no question on your side, Eva, as well? You're all good? Huh? Um, yes, I'm just checking if the, you, you were checking the chat, right? While I was talking. What did you say? You were checking the chat. There is no other questions, right? No, no, no. I did not see. No, no. Perfect. So good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Tomorrow, we're going to be in the Isla Secas in Panama with Andre Gomez, a general manager. And we're always looking for it. But Eva, thank you. I know for you, it's a little later at night and we appreciate you. Uh, always, always a pleasure. Your always passion a pleasure. and your smile and uh, your beautiful island. I think just to see Greece can make everyone happy. Huh? So, uh, Dominique, before we, we, we close, there is one question. How about tours to um, uh, South Greece? Um, on my, on my follow-up, I will have a full variety of what we cover in the southern part of Greece, just below Athens, such as Peloponnese, where the Olympic Games started from. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very popular destination where you can either drive or um, you can take a helicopter flight. So Diana will do all my follow-up and I will specifically point out those to you. All right, perfect. Huh? Uh, so, everyone, again, thank you so much for joining us. Buenas thank tardes. You, Au revoir. Thank you. <laughs> and happy holidays if we don't see you online uh, still uh, before uh, next week. Bye-bye. Yeah? Absolutely. Take care. Bye, everyone.